This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. So on this channel, we've talked about every single breathing style in all of Demon Slayer. And in that video about all of these breathing styles, we explained what these breathing styles were about, what made them different, how they started, and what they were variations of. We even went so far as to talk about every single person who's used them and how they used them. But during the duration of that video, I established that I believed that every single breathing style was similarly powerful. That is to say, with the exception of sun breathing, that all breathing techniques are equally as powerful as each other. It's just up to the person who uses them. But recently I've been doing a little thinking and I've come to the realization that that may not be the case. See, while yes, we can all agree that sun breathing is undoubtedly the strongest of all the breathing techniques, that does not mean that the other variations of sun breathing, because every breathing technique is a variation of sun breathing, cannot be differently powerful. Because when we think about the reason that sun breathing is the most powerful breathing technique, it really boils down to a couple of things. And those couple of things is that sun breathing is considered the perfect blend of offense and defense. So if within the confines of the Demon Slayer universe, the perfect breathing style is the perfect blend of offense and defense, it would stand to reason that other other breathing techniques that have almost the perfect blend of offense and defense would be closer to sun breathing than others. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions to this rule. It's not absolute by any means, but also you have to take into the fact that some breathing techniques actually give the users of said breathing techniques superhuman abilities. And those abilities have to absolutely be considered when talking about the strength of a breathing technique apart from the user. But enough preamble, let's get to talking about these rankings. Well, actually, before we get to talking about any rankings, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And while I got you doing things, please guys follow my other two YouTube pages. One is NC Gamer 23, where instead of talking about anime, I play video games like our brand new playthrough of Subnautica Below Zero. And then my other page is Hammer's Collection, where I unbox massive statues like all of the ones you see behind me. And that right there, that's a sneak peek. You're gonna have to follow the page to see what it is. But before we get into all that, guys, today we gotta talk about our favorite reoccurring sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat is a monthly subscription Japanese snack box. Tokyo Treat is filled with Japanese snacks that you would find in your average Japanese household. And each month has a theme. And this month's theme is Moon Festival Munchies. But most of you aren't native Japanese readers or speakers. So when you see something like this, you may see Hello Kitty, but you don't know what it says. And if you don't know what it says, you don't know what's in there. Fortunately, Tokyo Treat has solved this problem for us. Tokyo Treat with every box provides a 24 page pamphlet. And this pamphlet not only tells you about what's inspired this month's theme, it also describes the taste, allergens, and significance of every single snack in this box. So now we know this is Hello Kitty Star Milk Bread. Let's Try it. Mmm, it's nice and doughy. It's still sweet. It's thick. It's delicious. But that's enough about Tokyo Treat. Let's talk about Sakurako. You see, Sakurako, like Tokyo Treat, is a Japanese monthly subscription box. However, Sakurako gives you a window into how a traditional Japanese household would snack. While Tokyo Treat is filled with what's new and popular, Sakurako focuses on the history of Japan. Everything in here is a handmade snack made by Japanese artisans. And just like with Tokyo Treat, every month has a theme, and this theme is Kyoto Moon Festival. And just like with Tokyo Treat, if you don't read Japanese, well, this isn't gonna mean much to you. But fortunately, we have our pamphlet, which has taught us that these are retro animal yochi cookies. Let's try it. Mmm, I think Animal Crackers should have stayed retro. This is delicious. But Sakura Co. doesn't only send you snacks. They also send you a piece of tableware every single month. And this month's is a sauce dish, which is shown with the Kyoto Moon Festival as its background. This is actually incredible. So what are you guys waiting for? Use code NCHAMMER at checkout today for $5 off either your first box of Tokyo Treat or Sakura Co. But don't just go type it into Google Tokyo Treat or Sakura Co. Guys, please use the link in my description or my pinned comment. Let's get the snacking. So we've reversed our take that all breathing styles are the same in terms of power outside of sun breathing. And that in order to be considered the strongest breathing style, one should have a perfect blend of offense, defense, and maybe some superhuman abilities. But where does that put us? Well, I'd like to say for the confines of this video, please separate the user of the breathing style from the breathing style itself. Obviously, stone breathing looks incredibly powerful when Guillaume uses it, but Guillaume is also seven foot tall, 350 pounds, and pure muscle. And you might consider insect breathing to look weak when Shinobu uses it, 
bit, but that's simply because she is the weakest of all the Hashira. We are talking strictly about breathing techniques and how that breathing technique would operate in the hands of anyone fully versed in said breathing technique. You would take the 50th strongest person and use that in our ranking because everybody above that person, everyone below that person doesn't work into our average. You get it? You got it? Good. Now I did technically use Shinobu as an example. I said we're not going to call insects breathing the weakest because Shinobu uses it and she's the weakest of the Hashira. That being said, however, insect breathing is the weakest breathing form. And it's not because Shinobu uses it. You see, insect breathing was created by Shinobu because she wasn't strong enough to decapitate a demon. But since we're not applying Shinobu's physical strength to this breathing style, we have to talk about the breathing style detached from Shinobu. So if you look at insect breathing as an aggregate whole, it is a breathing style based on high levels of agility and speed. Essentially, the Demon Slayer has to act like an insect, being able to stab an opponent multiple times with a wisteria-tipped sword. Obviously, Shinobu's superhuman agility and speed makes us very powerful for her. However, on a base aggregate, this breathing style wouldn't be very helpful to a lot of people. Like when you consider the fact that you need a constant tap of wisteria poison to make this breathing style even remotely effective, and that most upper level demons, and that most upper level demons actually have an incredibly high wisteria poison tolerance. Meaning pretty much regardless of how many times you stab an upper moon with wisteria poison, they won't die. But I know what you're saying, you're saying the speed and agility that is required to use insect breathing would inherently come with somebody who was using insect breathing. And you're correct there. However, speed and agility isn't specific to insect breathing. There are multiple other breathing forms that focus just as heavily on speed and agility as insect breathing. And while Shinobu is the fastest of all the Hashira in terms of combat ability, that's Shinobu. Insect breathing as a whole is basically just trying to kill demons in a way that probably won't kill demons. Up next is, well, gonna be controversial. You see, insect breathing as the lowest isn't really gonna surprise anybody. However, our second to weakest form being thunder breathing, well, is probably not gonna be very popular. See, now that we're talking about breathing techniques that people could say are either really high or really low, I'd like to bring up the fact that we're talking about being a balance of offense and defense. Thunder breathing has quite literally zero defensive moves. Thunder breathing has seven forms. I put that in quotation marks because the first form is thunderclap and flash which itself has sixfold, eightfold, and god speed, which is essentially just a straight line attack at an enemy that either hits them six times, eight times, or an innumerous amount of times in god speed. Now, god speed is only accessible to Zenitsu because he's been training his legs for years. And even currently where we're in the anime, he's only able to use god speed twice a day. Now, forms two through six from what we've seen are actually specific to Kaigaku. And while yes, it is implied that Kaigaku figured out the majority of these breathing forms while he was still a human, every single one of these breathing techniques, two through six, requires him to use his blood demon art and since his blood demon art quite literally makes lightning it feels like we can't actually consider that in lightning breathing because his augmentation of lightning breathing isn't really lightning breathing anymore at least the way that we would look at it for a demon slayer using it so to the confines that we understand human thunder breathing it's basically just its first and seventh form which are pretty much the exact same thing the user comes at you in a straight line very quickly and slices your head off which makes lightning breathing incredibly weak on the defensive side and technically insect breathing is faster than it at least we can assume that since shinobu was stated to be the fastest person in combat and yet we've had thunder breathers for generations but since thunder breathing does involve doing the thing that usually kills demons decapitating them it's stronger than insect in my book and that book's about to get even more controversial because the next entry on the list is serpent i know I know, I know, Obanai is probably the third, maybe fourth strongest Hashira, but almost the entirety of his strength does come from his relation to Kabuto Maru, his snake, because him and his snake can communicate telepathically, which essentially allows him to be able to see with his one eye and have all the senses of a snake who can lick the air and tell him what's around him. But serpent breathing itself is very basic. Yes, a serpent breather will imitate a snake, so they'll meander around and strike quickly. And the fact that these serpent breathers meander and then strike quickly does catch enemies off guard. But there is entire breathing form dedicated to catching your enemy off guard like mist breathing that are substantially stronger. Serpent breathing only has five known techniques and all five of them are some variation of lunging at their opponent and slashing them. First form is called winding serpent slash where the user moves like a slithering snake and unleashes several slashes at once. The second form is a blindingly fast dash where the user decapitates their enemy. A bit like thunder breathing seventh form and the fifth form is truly where serpent breathing takes a step above the previous two. You see fifth form slithering serpent allows the user to decapitate multiple enemies at once. 
But just like with Thunder Breathing, Servant Breathing has absolutely no defensive capabilities. All five moves are offensive. And while some people do say that a great offense is a good defense, those aren't the parameters that have been laid out for us in the Demon Slayer universe. Our next entry on the list, I don't feel good about because it's one of my favorite breathing techniques in the entire show, but it is also the first entry on our list to have a defensive move. Our next entry on the list is Beast Breathing. Now this one is not one I feel particularly good about because Beast Breathing is actually very powerful in the right hands. By the end of the manga, Nosuke is one of the strongest demon slayers of all time. On top of that, Beast Breathing has 13 forms, mostly because Inosuke just does whatever he wants, but still. And while most of Beast Breathing's techniques just involve Inosuke waving his arms around, there's a couple techniques in there that are genuinely very impressive. Like Beast Breathing's seventh form, Spatial Awareness. Now, obviously, Beast Breathing was created by Inosuke, so there's a possibility that Spatial Awareness may only be applicable to him. However, since it is considered a breathing technique within the confines of Beast Breathing, we're going to assume if anybody else were to learn all the techniques of Beast Breathing, they would also be able to use Spatial Awareness. And because there's no sample size of other people using Spatial Awareness, we're just going to use Inosuke as our average. Beast's breathing seventh form, Spatial Awareness, requires the user to put their swords in the ground and stick their arms out to their side. And simply by feeling the disturbances in the air, Inosuke was able to count how many demons were on an entire mountain and what their weaknesses were. That's our first supernatural ability that a breathing technique gives you. And it's a very powerful one. Now, obviously having the time to pull off spatial awareness isn't always a luxury you're gonna have. It's more meant for recon than actual combat. But Beast Breathing also has things like Beast Breathing Ninth Form, which is called Extending Bendy Slash. Essentially, Beast Breathing requires total mastery of your own body. Anosuke is able to rearrange his guts to avoid fatal blows, and his control over his body doesn't end with his guts. With Beast Breathing Ninth Form, Anosuke is able to dislocate his arm in order to increase the range of his slash. And once again, since this is one of the breathing techniques of beast breathing, we should assume that anybody who learns beast breathing can do this. And while that may not sound crazy powerful, in a sword fight, gauging how far your opponent can swing their blade is paramount to your survival. So even a matter of one or two inches could be life or death. And then there's Beast Breathing's Pseudo 13th Form. I say Pseudo 13th because it's not called 13th Form. It's just called Sudden Throwing Strike, where Inosuke just throws his swords at an enemy in a circular fashion, making him the first person on this list with projectiles, technically. And then lastly, we have the 12th Form, Whirling Fangs. This form has the Beast Breathers spinning their swords rapidly in a circular formation in order to block incoming enemy attacks or projectiles. And thus, we have our first entry on this list with a defensive move. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, Nick, well, Beast Breathing has a defensive move and gives you a supernatural ability, why isn't it higher on the list? While unpredictability is basically Beast Breathing's biggest strength, that was hard to say, it's also probably its biggest weakness. Without the preternatural control of your body that Inosuke has, this breathing form would probably get most people killed. Obviously, not every single person who learns Beast Breathing is going to be able to rearrange their guts and have poison defense. Most people who learn Beast Breathing, even if they learned all of its techniques, would probably be doing what Inosuke is doing the majority of the time just flailing their swords around. But it does still offer more as a breathing technique than our previous three entries. Up next, we have what's gonna be another controversial pick, stone breathing. What? You picking stone breathing? This low Giyome uses it. He's the strongest Hashira. I will once again reiterate that's because he's seven foot, 350 pounds and cut to ribbons. Oh, and also his hearing's so good he can hear skin healing. Okay, but if Giyome's doing all the work for stone breathing, why is it above those four other breathing techniques? Well, because there's actually a lot of versatility in the way that stone breathing works. You see, stone breathing is meant to mimic stone, which means that all of the techniques within stone breathing are meant to use the ground under you. Essentially, a stone breather is supposed to use their surrounding to make vast, powerful techniques that specialize in both offense and defense. And because we're using the blend of offense and defense as our power scale here, then that's obviously good. But let's talk about stone breathing outside the confines of Guillaume. Stone breathing, like beast breathing, is a dual-wielding breathing technique. While Guillaume uses an axe and a flail, you don't necessarily have have to do that. The progenitor of stone breathing uses a kusarigama. Basically all that matters though is that the two weapons that you have are connected with a chain. The chain is important because a large part of stone breathing is actually throwing your weapon. Both the first and second forms require that the stone breather in question throw the axe and flail or whatever chain attached weapons they have. And because two out of the five forms require you to throw your weapon, that means that stone breathing actually has one of the better ranges of engagement out of all the breathing techniques. Obviously any breathing technique that allows you to be physically far away from your enemy is going to be superior, as long as your techniques are able to deliver with enough power to keep your enemy on their heels. And the third form of stone breathing is called stone skin, where the 
user unleashes a bunch of slashes around their body, deflecting incoming attacks or projectiles. So once again, defensive boost. But truly where Stone Breathing gets the majority of its points is his versatility. By having two weapons that are attached to a chain, the user is able to throw the weapon, grab the chain, create pincer attacks, extend their reach by holding one of the weapons and swinging the other. Stone Breathing does truly give you almost unlimited options when it comes to fighting. Therefore, it is a very balanced, if not relatively simple, fighting technique. I say simple because there's no superhuman ability, trickery, or elements generated. What do I mean? by elements generated. Because all of these techniques are basically just people envisioning themselves to either be rocks or insects or fire, right? Well, in all circumstances outside of one, that is the case. And that one is the next one on this list, wind breathing. I know, another controversial pick because Tsunemi is definitely the second strongest Hashira. Okoki Shibu literally told Tsunemi that he trained his human body to as far as a human body could ever be trained, implying that he is as superhuman a human as a human could ever be. And this is evidenced by the fact that once he's slashed open, he's quite literally able to flex it closed. Okay, then same thing as stone breathing now. If Tsunemi is doing the majority of the work for wind breathing, why is it higher than things like stone breathing? Well, because it's quite literally the only breathing technique that creates the element it's named after. That's right, water breathing doesn't make water. Flame breathing doesn't make fire. They simply impersonate the elements they're named after. However, wind breathing does make wind, and a lot of it. While the first six forms of wind breathing are relatively standard as far as breathing techniques go, five of them are offensive, the third form is defensive, which is a common misconception about wind breathing. People assume that there's no defensive techniques within it because Tsunemi never focuses on defense. But that's because he's angry all the time and he can flex close wounds, so he doesn't really need to worry about defense. But the true strength of wind breathing comes in its seventh through ninth form. You see, wind breathing seventh form actually has the user of wind breathing creating gale force winds that can rip opponents to shreds. Wind breathing's eighth form has the user of wind breathing basically creating a tornado of death. By swinging their sword in such a way, they create circular air currents that slice up their opponents instantly. And wind breathing's ninth form, Itaden Typhoon, has the user create a massive column of air from above their opponent that destroys everything below. While on the outside, wind breathers like Tsunemi may seem like they're entirely focused on offense and being directly on top of their opponents, the versatility provided with forms seven through nine is insane. Being able to keep your opponent at a distance with deadly moves is a colossal asset on the battlefield. Truly, the only reason I put wind breathing this low is because Tsunemi, probably being the fourth strongest person in the entirety of Demon Slayer, is probably the best representation of wind breathing we'll ever see. So that is to say that wind breathing in anybody else's hands probably wouldn't be nearly as strong, which is why we probably no longer have Masachika, if we're being real. But here's the thing about wind breathing. If the thing that makes it truly elite is the ability to keep your opponent at a distance, well, it's got to be lower than the next entry on our list. You see, because our next entry on the list is love breathing. And I can hear you screaming already, Mitsuri is nowhere near as strong as Tsunemi. And I completely agree. She's probably the seventh strongest Hashira. However, her breathing technique, love breathing, which she derived from flame breathing is incredibly powerful in that it's basically built to keep your opponent far away from you but your sword close to them you see love breathing can be used with a regular katana but mitsuri uses a whip katana and here's the thing i know what you're saying you're saying well nick whip swords don't actually exist this is completely made up fantasy land but here's the thing whip swords actually do exist in fact mitsuri's katana is based off the urumi a whip sword used by ancient sri lankans the idea of which was to give yourself a variable and extended reach away from your opponent. You see, here's the thing about a whip, especially when it's a sword. It has an adjustable range. It also can move at supersonic speeds. Crack you hear from a whip as you whip it is the tip of the whip breaking the sound barrier. And the fact that a love breather can unleash multiple of these slashes in one fell swoop means that you're being attacked at supersonic speeds multiple times. In fact, this is basically exactly what Love Breathing's third form is. The unleashing of a multiple attack hailstorm of whip katana attacks. And on top of being able to attack from varied distances and therefore keep your opponent either far away, up close, or wherever you want them, Love Breathing's second form operates defensively. Second form, Love Pangs, allows the user to unleash multiple whip attacks around themselves to deflect incoming attacks. So when you consider the fact that there's both offense and defense in this fighting technique, 
and the fact that you get to control exactly how far away your enemy is from you and therefore keep yourself at a safe distance from them makes this a very powerful breathing technique, even if it may not look particularly powerful because it's used by Mitsuri. Staying in that exact same vein, up next, we have sound breathing. You see, sound breathing has five forms that we know of because it has a fifth form, but we've only ever seen three. And while obviously Tengen's ability musical score that allows him to feel the rhythm of a battle and then adjust his fighting technique accordingly helps his sound breathing, sound breathing on its own is also still very powerful because sound breathing like stone breathing is also dependent on dual wielding and more than that it is dependent on absolute pressure you see sound breathing is supposed to mimic sound specifically large disorienting sound but sound breathing at its core outside of sun breathing is probably the hardest breathing technique to learn because tengen's swords don't just explode no, Tengen is throwing anti-demon bombs every time he swings his sword. He is then cutting those anti-demon bombs with his spinning swords. So yes, obviously this breathing technique is dependent on something else. Like we said with insects breathing and wisteria poison. However, this technique isn't dependent on the bombs. Since wisteria poison is the only way you can kill a demon with insect breathing. What truly makes sound breathing stronger than love breathing and all the other entries on this list thus far is the fact that it's more versatile and more focused on defense than any of the other entries. You see, just like what we said with both love breathing and stone breathing, having two weapons connected by a chain gives you versatility in the range at which you can fight. We saw this in Tengen's battle against Gyotaro. Multiple times throughout this battle, Tengen actually caught Gyotaro off guard by adjusting his range. He went so far as to grab the tip of one of his swords and swing it in an arc-like fashion in order to increase his range. Things like this and the ability to constantly be swinging his swords by grabbing his chains give him a massive amount of versatility on the battlefield, which is what his second form is entirely dependent upon. Concert Resounding Slashes basically has a sound breather spinning their blades in a circle while releasing bombs. This technique is both offensive and defensive. You see, because obviously there is swords being swung at somebody and there's explosions going off, which is basically all sound breathing is about. But at the same time, since there's swords swinging in circles and also explosions, all incoming attacks and projectiles are being deflected. I mean that basically as long as this form is maintained, you can attack and defend simultaneously. Sound breathing, more than anything, essentially makes you a human buzzsaw. The constant spinning of your swords basically just means you have to approach your enemy. And since you're just spinning your swords, the sword play isn't necessarily complicated. You just swing your arm at them while swinging these swords, or swing your swords at their sword in order to defend yourself. So even without the use of musical score, because obviously the average sound breather wouldn't have that combination of offensive and defensive capabilities that sound breathing brings to you is not to be scoffed at. In fact, I would say thus far out of every breathing technique on this list, I would say it's the most competent defensively. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that it's more competent defensively than our next entry on the list, but our next entry on the list is just a better breathing technique. That's because our next entry on the list is mist breathing. You see, mist breathing users are meant to emulate mist. And while they don't technically produce mist, the way that they fight is meant to obscure the tempo of their opponent. That's a confusing sentence. What do I mean by that? That. Essentially, mist breathing is all about confusing your opponent, but confusing your opponent by changing your tempo and obscuring your movements. Essentially, this requires you to wear very baggy clothing, which is why Moishiro wears such baggy clothing. Essentially, by drowning yourself in an outfit that looks like it belongs in a 2003 crunk video, it's hard for you to see where your arms or your legs are moving. And since we've already established with both sound breathing and love breathing that being able to catch your opponent off guard by adjusting your range or your tempo is crucial in battle. So when your opponent can't predict your moves because you're moving unpredictably and changing your tempo and also obscuring your movements with large baggy clothing that makes you very dangerous in battle not to mention the majority of the seven forms of mist breathing are very well balanced with its first two forms being offensive its third form being defensive and its fourth form essentially being thunder breathing yeah mist breathing's fourth form shifting flow sash is essentially ei jutsu the act of lining up an opponent with your sword in your sheath and then dashing at them incredibly quickly unsheathing your sword slashing and then resheathing your sword it's quite literally just thunderclap and flash without doing it six times and if you're accurate once is enough you see, Mist Breathing's fifth form is called Sea of Clouds and Haze. Essentially, the user of Mist Breathing lunges at their opponent at high speeds and launches a fury of attacks while obscuring their movements. But because they're moving so fast and they're unleashing so many attacks while obscuring their movements, it's incredibly hard to predict where these slashes are going to be. But the true strongest ability of Mist Breathers is its seventh form. While technically this ability was created by Moishiro, I'm assuming that 
since it is now considered a breathing technique within the confine of misbreathing that other misbreathers down the line could learn it. Essentially, this technique has a misbreather change their tempo so rapidly that they appear as though they've created a fog of mist. This ability has them changing their tempo almost constantly so that when they show themselves, they appear as though they're moving incredibly slow. But as they go to hide, they hide in the blink of an eye. This completely rewrites the tempo of a battle, especially if you're fighting somebody who has a lot of battle experience. Somebody who's very well adjusted to the average battle tempo with your average demon slayer is going to be very thrown off by somebody who appears slow as they show themselves, but quick as they hide. Because even inherently, it's non-intuitive, which means that demons and humans who are usually able to defend against these kind of attacks won't be able to because they'll either miss or they won't see it coming but since we're talking about seeing we probably have our most controversial entry thus far flower breathing yeah the breathing technique used by shinobu's dead sister and kana oh yeah they, that one that one is stronger than stone breathing I sound dumb right now let me explain myself flower breathing has five forms well it has seven forms but we only know five well the first four forms we know are pretty basic two are offensive two are defensive which by the way perfectly balanced flower breathing's true ability comes in its final form or its seventh form and that form is called equinoctial equine equinoct equin equino equinoctial vermilion eye Equinoctial. Equinoctial. That's what I said, right? Regardless, Equinoctial Vermilion Eye is basically like having a Byakugan in Demon Slayer. Essentially, by maximizing the kinetic vision of the user of flower breathing, they're able to slow down the world around them. And this is done by pumping a massive amount of blood to their eyes, just like with a Byakugan. While the use of this technique is technically dangerous because it can cause blood vessels in the eye to erupt and lead to either damaged eyesight or blindness, it's still very powerful. I mean, think about what I just said. A Byakugan in Demon Slayer. Users of flower breathing are able to see in slow motion, meaning that speed advantages are all but null and void. I mean, Kanae was able to give Doma a pretty good fight, and that is saying something. So yes, while the two users that we know of flower breathing are not the strongest characters in Demon Slayer of all time, being able to essentially tap into a dojutsu by funneling blood into your eye is incredibly powerful. However, unfortunately, in a battle of balance, there is very few techniques stronger than the next entry on our list, water breathing. You see, water breathing is technically the most used breathing technique in the entire Demon Slayer world. And this is because it's the easiest technique to learn. You could tie this to a couple of different reasons. You could say that it's easy to learn because it mimics water. And water can take multiple forms. It can crash, it can flow, it can stand completely still. And while there is technically nothing that separates water breathing from all the other breathing techniques, its sheer roundedness and its adaptability makes it truly elite. Like there's no final form that gives you the Byakugan, but it is almost perfectly rounded. Like obviously there's things like Striking Tide and Whirlpool, which are basically just attacks in different ways. But there's also things like Drop Ripple Thrust, which is a stab specifically meant to slow down incoming projectile or completely deflect them. But there's also things like Water Breathing's ninth form, Splashing Water Flow Turbulent, which is a breathing technique based around changing your footwork. Essentially, it's meant to be used if you're fighting in a space that doesn't have concrete footing, which allows you to fight with no reservations. Truly, in this sense, Water Breathing is just like water, incredibly adaptable to the situation. And that's without even talking about Dead Calm, a personal creation of Giyu that allows him to stand perfectly calm and deflect all incoming attacks basically regardless of speed or number. Obviously, if attacks come in fast enough or numerous enough, it can be outdone. That takes a very high level of fighting to happen. However, I don't believe we should count that towards water breathing as a whole, considering the fact that we know of like eight water breathers and only Giyu can do it. But it's worthy of consideration that water breathers at the highest level can accomplish this. So all in all, while it's not necessarily a sexy breathing technique, it is so adaptable in such a good blend of offense and defense, it's undeniable as one of the strongest. The next technique falls into the exact same category because their next breathing form is flame breathing. Now, the simple thing to say here would be flame breathing is close to sun breathing and therefore it's strong. Except sun breathing and flame breathing are very, very different from each other. I would say sun breathing is actually closer to water breathing than it is flame breathing. Regardless, flame breathing is incredibly strong because just like water breathing, it is incredibly adaptable. Essentially towing the line of being perfectly offensive and defensive simultaneously. However, flame breathing only has nine techniques and we've only seen six of them. So how can I say it's more adaptable than water breathing when we've seen all 11 forms of water breathing? Well, it's not that I believe flame breathing is more adaptable than water breathing. It's something else. You see, flame breathing is largely built around kendo. 
which is one of the oldest sword forms known to man. Essentially, kendo is dependent upon holding your sword in a high position and making one slash with your sword. It is very simple, quick, and effective sword style. In fact, historically, it was the sword style used by most katana wielders. The speed and efficiency delivered with a singular strike mechanism is what kept it relevant for centuries. On top of that, the power delivered from an overhead strike is substantially more than a strike delivered from any other place. Therefore, that is to say that this breathing technique has the strongest strikes physically. Obviously, things like stone breathing end up having the strongest strikes because there's monsters using it. But with the rules of the Demon Slayer universe is set for us, saying that the perfect breathing technique is to toe the line perfectly between offense and defense, Flame breathing truly, I believe, is the closest to that outside of supernatural things like sun breathing and our next entry on the list, moon breathing. You see, I don't feel great including moon breathing because, well, it's kind of the same situation as Kaigaku. Moon breathing has 16 forms and almost every single one of those 16 forms relies on Kokyoshibo's blood demon art. You see, Kokyoshibo's blood demon art allows him to create crescent moons. And these crescent moons are basically like mini swords. And when he swings his sword, he leaves a wake of those crescent moons flying at his opponent. Obviously, if you weren't a demon with Kokyoshibo's blood demon art, you wouldn't be able to do this. And therefore, separating Kokyoshibo from moon breathing, basically impossible. On top of that, Kokushiba's sword is quite literally his blood, so he can extend it to any range he wants. But the fact that this breathing technique has 16 forms and has also been built over 500 years speaks to how strong it could be even without a blood demon art. Essentially, Kokushiba was the first person to realize he couldn't learn sun breathing, so he created the second best thing. Now, obviously, moon breathing isn't as strong as sun breathing because if it was, well, he wouldn't have had to become a demon. And also, he lost the Yoroichi when Yoroichi was like 80. So while it is basically impossible to separate Kokushibu from moon breathing, the fact that there's 16 techniques and that they are pretty much a perfect balance of offense and defense leads us to believe that it's probably, regardless of a blood demon or, or not, the second strongest breathing technique. Which brings us finally to our strongest breathing technique sun breathing did you guys see this coming i've only been saying it for like the last half hour sun breathing is obviously the breathing technique it is quite literally what every single other breathing technique is based off of every other breathing technique was created because nobody else was strong enough to learn sun breathing well unless you were a commodo and knew how to dance sun breathing has 13 techniques i mean it's kind of got 12 but it's also kind of got 13. and within all of those 12 techniques you can see every other breathing technique because remember every other breathing technique was based off of sun breathing so within sun breathing there's techniques that look like water release and stone release and thunder release and flame release and wind release was i just saying release i'm trying to de naruto this page it just it sticks with me man if you don't take my word for it things like fake rainbow emulate mist breathing where the user of sun breathing moves so quickly and at such an odd tempo that they leave physical after images or fire wheel which is just water wheel but fire or solar heat haze, which also is a bit like mist breathing, where the user of sun breathing swings at their opponent and their sword appears as though it's covered in haze, so if it looks like it misses you, actually, usually it hits. But sun breathing's true strongest form is in its 13th form. This is what the Hinokami Kagura is. Essentially, Yoroichi, 800 years ago, connected all 12 forms of sun breathing, and he connected them into one long pseudo dance. Now, this dance increased the efficiency at which these techniques could be released, and therefore this dance could be done over in succession for hours. And that was important because this dance was created specifically to destroy the 12 vital organs of Muzon. And if your technique's killing the quite literal king of demons, well, it's probably the strongest one. And that's it, guys. That's the whole list. That's the ranking. Thank you so much for hanging out for this video. If you agree with my list, tell me down in the comments below. If you don't agree with my list, please write a letter, address it to your ass, and ship it. Nah, I'm kidding. You're absolutely allowed to disagree with my rankings. Just be respectful. And if you guys like this video and you want to see more rankings, please tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell did i put flame breathing in third place because rengoku is my favorite character i'm not gonna say no